There's a passage where the Buddha contrasts how a wise person and a foolish person differ in the way they react to pain. They both feel pain. Awakened people get sick, they grow ill, and they die just like regular people, but they react in a different way. The foolish person, the Buddha said, when gets struck by a pain, reacts in a way that adds more pain. So it's like being shot by one arrow, and then you turn around and shoot yourself with another arrow. Well, it's always struck me that the, the image is, t is too weak, because actually many times you turn around and you shoot yourself with your whole quiver. Whatever arrows you've got, you shoot yourself with them, and no wonder you suffer. Whereas the wise person doesn't add those extra arrows. What this means is when you find yourself suffering over something, you've got to look at which arrows are coming from outside and which ones are the ones that you're shooting. This comes down to a fairly abstract principle that the Buddha points out in another passage, that when you experience a feeling of any kind, part of it is just a potential for that feeling that comes from outside or comes from your past karma. And then you actualize that potential. You fabricate the potential into an actual feeling. What this means is that we're not totally passive in our experience of pleasure and pain. Life is not a TV show where you turn on the TV and discover you have only one channel. So if you want entertainment, you've got to put up with whatever's on the channel. It's more like an interactive game. Some things you can't change in the game, but some things you can. So you want to focus on what you can change. And you want to take advantage of this ability you have to fashion your experience in a positive way. In fact, a lot of the path of the practice is learning how to shoot yourself not with arrows, but with pleasure. Shoot yourself with wisdom. Because the way we fabricate things, partly it's through the breath, partly it's through our ways of thinking, our perceptions, and the way we fabricate feeling. One of the lessons you learn here as you breathe is that a pain comes up in the body, and you don't have to just sit there and put up with the pain. You can try breathing around it, breathing through it, breathing in different ways. They're going to have an impact on how you experience the pain. Sometimes there will be a little germ or a seed of an actual physical cause for the pain. But if you change your attitude towards the pain, it's like shooting it with pleasure, shooting it with mindfulness, shooting it with good breath sensation. See how that works. Sometimes by changing the way you breathe, changing the way you think about what your body is doing as it breathes, it can actually change the physical cause of the pain. At other times, the physical cause is still there. But as you surround the pain with comfortable breath sensations, you find that the pain doesn't spread. It doesn't grab hold of you. It doesn't grab hold of your body. It doesn't grab hold of your awareness. You're on top of this process of fabrication. So instead of shooting yourself with more arrows, you're shooting yourself with good breath sensations shooting yourself with new perceptions, the way you perceive the, the breath and the body. Of course, this principle applies to issues outside as well, your relations with other people. How many arrows do they shoot you with, and how many times do you shoot yourself with your whole quiver of arrows? They may say one thing to you that gets you upset. They say it once, and you say it over and over and over in your mind. And if you could fire arrows with a rapid succession that you can think these harmful thoughts, you'd be a great archer. So what you've got to learn how to do is replace that tendency to shoot yourself with more pain, more arrows, and 
shoot yourself with some wise perceptions. Get some perspective on that other person. Get perspective on what happened. Instead of focusing on all the sorrows and pains and difficulties in your life, you might look at, well, where, where are things going well right now? This is not to say that you don't have to deal with these issues sometimes, but learn how to put things into perspective. So that you're not shooting arrows, you're shooting wisdom, you're shooting discernment. Because the purpose of all this is not simply to make life livable, but it's to put yourself in a position where you really can practice. You're not focusing all your energy on adding to your pains. You're getting the mind in a position where it doesn't feel like it has to go out and straighten out the world in every way first before it's going to practice. If you had to straighten out the world before you could practice, nobody could practice on the human plane. You got perspective on the issue. There are crazy people out there. There are insane people out there. A lot of them have power. But you don't have to have that, allow that power to extend into your mind, into your attitude. You've got to learn how to keep your attitude as, as much under control as you can. Again, like an interactive game, there's some things that you can't change in your situation. But there's a lot that you can. Sometimes you make one choice in the interactive game and it changes the whole plot. There are times it can simply shoot off one or two of the bad guys. But at least you can play a role and get the mind in a position where it is able to practice able to turn around and look inside and say, well, the real cause of all this pain is what I'm doing. And this, again, connects with that inside of the Buddha, that pains and feelings of pleasure are not a given. We're not simply passive recipients of these things. We're, we take an active role in informing them. And the best way to understand that active role is not to simply be passive and say, well, I'm not going to do anything at all, because what happens is the active role you play then goes underground where you don't see it. Bring it up into your conscious awareness that you have the ability, to some extent at least, to fashion that pain, to fashion that pleasure. What direction are you going to fashion it into? You're going to shoot it with more arrows? You're going to shoot it with wisdom? You've got the choice. And as you develop skill in this process of fabricating your experience, you gain more insight into how the whole process of fabrication plays a role in your life. And then you're better positioned to decide how to fabricate things, which areas are worth getting involved to fabricate, and which ones are not. Learning how to fabricate good states in the mind, the pleasure, the rapture of right concentration, those are good fabrications. The direct of thought and evaluation that bring those feelings about. Those are good fabrications because they bring you to a point where ultimately you can see there's something unfabricated. It doesn't arise, doesn't pass away, it's just there. And that's when you, don't have, you can stop shooting entirely because that is so overwhelming. It's such a complete, total form of happiness. Some people say, well, the, the deathless is just that nice sort of spacey feeling around your sensations, and you tend to miss it if you don't look for it, but it's there. It's kind of a neither pleasure nor pain kind of space around things. That's not the deathless, that's just another kind of feeling. And dressing it up in that way is not a skillful way of dressing it up. It may make life a little bit more livable, but it doesn't really help you understand the process of fabrication, because that sense of space that you create around things, well, you created it. You are the one who turned your attention there. You are the one who tries to make something out of it, tries to shoot it with fancy labels. which may be nice, but it's, it's not the skillful shooting that the Buddha has in mind. He wants you to shoot yourself with the pleasure and bliss of concentration, the directed thought and evaluation. He shoot yourself with discernment, 
So you really can understand how even a state of equanimity is fashioned. What arrows go into that as well? What you're shooting yourself with as you hang out in a state of equanimity. So you ultimately can see through to what's not fashioned at all, not made of thatness is the actual translation of of the word non-fashioning. You're not making anything out of it. And you can get there not by simply telling yourself not to fashion anything, but as I said, mastering the process of fashioning, learning how to shoot yourself skillfully. Shoot your pain, shoot your pleasures, shoot your feelings of equanimity with insight. Once you're skillful in your shooting, then you can stop. But in the meantime, take advantage of this fact that your pains and pleasures are partly the result of past karma and partly the result of what you're doing right now. So look at what you're doing right now. Get really sensitive to that. And you find yourself that even though you're living in the same place where you were before, it's like a different world. The external situation may be the same as it was, but your experience of it is very different. Even though other people can shoot at you, you learn how not to get shot by them. Even though there are pains in the body, you don't let your mind get shot by them. So learn to use these factors of perception, i.e. the way you label things, the narratives you build up around things, the things you focus on as important, the things that you put aside as unimportant. You've got a lot of choices here, so make sure that you choose well.